Okay, we are on Amtrak. It is the second of January, 2020. You see our crazy kids. We always get the private room whenever we travel because there's so many of us. So you have an idea of who all's in the room. And then there's our bathroom. All right, so Britt and I were having a discussion about our goals for the next 10 years like where will we be in 10 years so some of the questions were like what will you do for work in 10 years or what will your vacation look like what will your family life look like um what will you be driving you know very specific goals and this is so important to us so um and hearing Britt talk about it at the very end i asked him well how did you feel about the exercise and i wanted to kind of get his reaction on camera because this is new for us we're not that new, but newish to be, to go this big. We thought we dreamed big before, and we met all those goals, and here we are, dreaming even bigger. And I wanted to kind of have Britt share his thoughts on it. So, can you talk about the exercise we just did and how it impacted you and what your thoughts are of it? Yeah. So coming into a new year, everyone says that you know I have New Year's resolutions of what I would like to do this particular year. But what about the what about the big goal of what you would like to have forever? Longevity goals. And that exercise that we just completed was one that got me thinking above and beyond. Um, ones that I probably would have never thought about. And the reason I say that is because one of the questions, I'm just going to give an example so you have an idea. But one of the examples was, you know, who would you like to have in your circle? And that was deep because... I have friends that I have in my circle, but if I could choose anyone to have in my circle to be with me along the way uh, as you know, I'm able to accomplish all the goals that I want to achieve with my personal goals or with my family, who would I want to be in that circle? And so as I thought about it and I mentioned some names, it gave me an idea that you can think big because yeah. these individuals can be in your circle. Can you tell us how you answered that question? So when you were asked who will be in your circle of influence yeah. in 10 years from now, who was it? Um, the people that will be in my circle uh, in the next 10 years uh, were President Obama. Uh, Say why. Talk, do the why, exercise. Why? Because um, his influence. His influence, his calmness, um, and how what he's come to achieve um, and where he's been. Um, I think his personality kind of matches mine in several ways as I think about the things that he's done, uh, especially as being a president of our country. Um, another person was uh, Pastor John Gray. Um, I know that he's helped me along the way through several occasions, especially in our marriage. Um, when I got an opportunity to just speak with him personally and find out you know what could i do to you know implement his words um in my my family life and marriage um my children so definitely he would be you know someone i would talk to on a daily basis uh my one of my closest friends mario mario and, and, and twin uh they would also be you know real close um individuals in my circle because I can trust them. And a lot of people in your circle, you you know, you want to be able to have someone that you can trust in your circle. Very important. Uh, so yeah, that was very important to me. Yeah. That was very important to me to have these individuals in my, in my circle. And like I said, with the exercise, it allows you to think big about if this was to, if you were to have an opportunity to choose your circle and to have it exactly the way you want, what would it look like? Because it can come true, it can happen. You just have to talk about it, speak it into existence. And once you've done that, then you can see, what do I need to do to make this take place? So this exercise not only allowed us to do that particular thing, to think about the people in our circle, but it also allowed us to think about what would we like to look like, clothing wise as a person, what would we like to drive? What would we like to do with our children? How would we like to help influence others? You know, I think one of the biggest things we talked about in this exercise was, you know, we've both been educators and my wife is taking a further step to be becoming a principal. Um, so what would that look like as we've done this for several years, over a decade, 
And if we had the opportunity like to have our children choose one friend to go on a trip with us each year and give them the experience. Can I put my tail in, Mom? An experience that they may have never not or never never have the opportunity to have. You know, I think giving back, when people say give back, give back. Children are always looking to get an autograph. Mm -hmm. We're showing them something different. We're showing them that we can actually What's up, children? Sorry, y'all yeah. know we got a lot of kids. Yeah. Stop. We can actually show you that it's not all about sports. It's not all about getting an autograph. It's showing you about a way of life and changing a generation for thinking that an autograph is probably one of the coolest things that you can have. To having an experience to go to a school to meet your needs, um, to learning the trade that's best fit for you. Now, these are some of the things that people don't think about. So when you have these type of exercises, it, get, it opens your mind up and it gives you the chance to think outside of the box. And if you can do that and have fun with it, but not only have fun with it, but record what you've done, and now you have somewhat of a plan because you can put the things that you've talked about together. And as you go through the year, we'll talk about you know making New Year's you know resolutions. What can you do to make any of what you said about this exercise actually happen? And as you've done that, and as you go through your journey you'll pay attention to the small details and say, hey, this is a perfect opportunity to go talk to the individual. Go sign up for that workshop. Watch this podcast. I'm Have a hungry, conversation Mom. with this in individual. Take the opportunity to sit I'm down and hungry, think Mom. about the best ways or I'm best hungry. methods in which this will work for our business plan. Take a travel or take, take your chance to travel to a place at a certain point in time where these are the individuals that you plan on meeting and assembling them together so that you can put together the goal that you have in store. It's very important that this in, this actual exercise is done and you have fun with it. And I think a lot of times we think about, oh, it's the exercise, I got to do this, got to do that. You don't have to be so mechanical. Just have fun with the exercise and dream big. Like and we started that, writing about it, right? We yeah. had to stop. The writing was taking too long and it was taking the fun out. Yeah, and it did. But once we start talking about it and just start speaking it, you can remember it because guess what? It comes from you. Yes. Yeah, it comes from you. And you're sharing it with somebody. And you're sharing it with someone. So if you forget some parts, I might remember some parts. And I really like the level of intimacy that it builds between the two of us. Oh, absolutely. Being able to share your innermost desires with the person that you love, that is what builds intimacy and closeness. Because now I know my what my husband has on his heart. And I know that... I know that that his mother doesn't know you know his best friends don't know that is something that we sh that we share that we know about each other i mean that's important for marriage to do that together yeah. and um can i share i want to share a question yeah, that, sure, that, sure. that stood out to me out there. yeah i got you so one question that stood out to me was um you know i gotta help my husband with the angles he don't have a double chin because he don't got three kids no. he got three kids and he ain't birth them <laughs> um but one question that stood out to me was what do you do for work That's not for us. Okay, so we have. Sorry, the uh, the conductor was speaking, um, but it talked about. It asked us, "What do you do for work?" And so right now, for work, you know, I'm a real estate investor. That's what I do, and I'm obviously really good at it. And so I thought bigger, like, well, right now I'm just buying houses. I rent them out. You know, I flip them, I sell them. But what do I want my work to be in ten years? I want to build cities. I literally want mayors, congressmen, and senators, even presidents, world leaders to reach out to me and say, Ashley, this is a city that we want to revive. Can we meet with you? Stop, baby. And get a plan on how to revive this city or build this city. And so with them, I'm going to be developing the real estate. I'm going to be developing the downtown, building the skyscrapers, building the subdivisions, building the you know area up. Like, that will be me. So I'm not just real estate. I'm not just investing in a house anymore. I'm now investing in cities, in states, in countries, and it all comes down to me. But why? Why do I do that? Because I'm not in love with real estate. You know, if you look at my other blogs and my other videos, I will tell you, real estate is not my first love. Education is. But education is broke, right? Edu our education system doesn't have a lot of money. And so in order to make a difference and have influence, he who, make, he who has the goal makes the rules. And so 
real estate for me is just a way to build capital so that I can invest in education. So my ultimate goal, my work is to build boarding schools in our impoverished, underrepresented communities. And these boarding schools will expose these students to an education like no other. A big talking point in education for the last few years has been individualized instruction. My boarding schools will be the epitome of individualized instruction. Every single student will have their own IEP, their own individualized education plan on how to help them to be the best that they can be. This will include counselors, psychologists, um, you know, industry experts, um, you know, I mean, even people who maybe like genealogists, you know, who look into their genes. I mean, I really want to get specific into what their strengths are. And my boarding school will help them play on those strengths. And whatever their weaknesses are, we will help them cope with them or um, help them to mitigate their weaknesses so that their strengths shine. And I gave my husband the example, like, look at this doorknob right here. You know, like, I want my students to be able to get the doorknob, babe. I want my students to be able to have, you know, if I have a student who's great at woodworking or steelwork, invent a doorknob. Because if you can look from New York City to Los Angeles, all the way to Kenya, to Ghana, to Australia, all seven continents, everybody has a doorknob. So if you were the one to invent that, and you're the one, or you're the one who, you didn't invent it, let's say you just made it better. Or made a better version of it, or a cheaper version of it, or a more eco-friendly version of it. I mean, you already have a multi-billion dollar business on your hands. So I want to be able to get that into, instill these into the students. I want to show them culture. You know, just being a black family, you don't see a lot of representations of black people in America other than sports or entertainment. You don't really see us as, um, you know, just... Just intelligent people. I mean, there's a lot of us. <laughs> a lot of us, but you don't see it in the media, you know. So I want to be able to show them something different, and um, that's my ultimate goal, you know. So that's the work that I do. I do a lot of fundraising for it. I'm going to be with a lot of politicians for it, um, the lawmakers, just to make sure that my boarding school has all of the resources that it needs. And I want my boarding schools to be in every single city in America, in the United States. If y'all start building on Mars, I want my boarding school to be there. Um, and it's not to make everything even, right? You know, I get it. All these other Ivy League boarding schools, you want them to be able to go to Harvard. So my kids will go to Harvard. They will. And if they and if you can't make it to Harvard, you want to go to college, I own some colleges and universities. You can go to my universities. But at the end of the day, I want you to figure out what your strength is, what is true to you, what calls to your spirit. And that's what I want my students to pursue and to do, do well in. Um, so that was just one of the questions that uh, we had to answer. So as we wrap it up, can I get you back on the screen? Yeah. You're, the, you're the handsome one in our family. As I get Britt back on the screen, this is important because... I help you. You have to know where you're going. Mm -hmm. But more than that, you have to kind of get an eye. You have to be able to dream bigger than you ever thought you could. And... I'm so blessed to have a husband who will do this kooky, weird stuff with me. Who will just think out loud about the craziest, most extravagant dreams that we could ever have. And so I want to know, Britt, what this means to you and what do you think this means to our children? You know, our ability to visualize. You got to take into consideration that if you don't do it, they'll, know, they'll never know how to do it. They'll never even know how to dream big because they've never seen an example of it. And some people are visual learners. I'm a visual learner myself. So to see our kids and they go back and they look at the video and say, Mom, Dad really actually did this. We were in the video. We were right there. They have the opportunity to see that this is important because what they see today and then they later see the results gives them confirmation that if you do it this way, it can actually happen. And as they see the results, they'll want to do that too. So, I think it was a great exercise, and I'm pleased to do it again. I appreciate that, and I'm very grateful for it. So, we challenge you guys. If you're married, do it together as a couple. If you're single, do it by yourself. Where are you in 10 years? Some questions that we ask each other. What does your vacation look like? What is? What do you drive? What do you do for work? How do people treat you? How do you treat other people? What does your joy look like? What is your morning routine? What does a week in your life look like 10 years from now? Dream big. Don't stop and think about, well, this doesn't make sense. Well, how am I going to make this happen? No, 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 no. This is the time where you just dream big. And when you finish dream big, dreaming big, dream bigger than that, y'all. 
try it try it and record it like we're doing and revisit it often and remind yourself because the universe hears you honey and why is you're telling it is doing it gotta go 15 15 minutes bye